Hello, everyone. Thank you for um, coming today. Um, as people are just coming in here, we're going to give them probably about two minutes here before we uh, actually get started. Uh, so just a little bit of patience with us. Hold up and we'll probably start about uh, two or three minutes past the hour. I uh, want to make sure that everyone gets the information that they need um, to get going here. Very good, there's still people coming in. I'll give them another uh, 30 seconds here before we get started. Okay, I think uh, I'm I'm gonna get I'm gonna get started here. I see people might still be coming in, but uh, this is the uh, hopefully they can uh, catch up where, when they get in. Uh, so the point of today uh, is to talk a little bit more about the uh, MSc in Digital Health Entrepreneurship, uh, a program that I lead within the Global Business School of Health. Uh, a couple of notes as we get started today. Um, as you can see, this is a webinar format. I'm sure that you're all well familiar with this after the last uh, several years of this. Um, uh, I will go through the content here. Um, I will do my best to uh, address questions as they come up, although um, I think it might be best to hold them off to the end, uh, given that there's you know, multiple screens here, I might not be able to catch up to what you are. So uh, if you have a question, uh, please uh, it, you know, hang on to it. I will try to address it as quickly as I can, uh, but it, it, it may actually just work better to hold them to the end. Um, there are two ways that you, you know, when we do get to the questions, there's gonna be two ways that you can address them. Um, if you raise your hand, I'm a, I can allow you to, to speak in order and, and you can then ask it. Uh, but if you look at the, the Zoom toolbar, there is also the um, Q and A section, and this will allow you to write it in. So if you're not in a position where you are able to uh, you know, speak and, and, and uh, tell us what your question is, uh, you can put it into the um, Q&A box there. And uh, typically what I will then do is I will read it out and then I will uh, answer it. Um, so that, that's sort of how we're going to get on today. Uh, so uh, I'm probably gonna talk for about uh, 30 minutes here and I tell you a lot about the great information about this amazing program that we've uh, kicked off uh, for this year, uh, talking about uh, for, for next year. Uh, and tell you a little bit about the program, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit about the Global Business School for Health, uh, a little bit about London and uh, the amazing campus that we are at uh, out in Stratford. Uh, uh, with a lot of great amenities to really facilitate uh, your learning if you decide to participate in this program. So as I said, this is the uh, open day for the Digital Health and Entrepreneurship course. And so, a little, you know, this is hosted by the Global Business School for Health. Uh, so a little bit about us. Uh, that we are the first business school in the world totally dedicated to educating health and healthcare management leaders. Uh, any of you who may have been uh, interested in this space for a while, you'll look around the world and you'll see that many of the leading business schools have a health department. Uh, that's a subsection uh, of what they're doing, maybe one or two faculty members. Uh, if you do a program there, uh, you might uh, get a health uh, module, maybe two or three, uh, but mostly it's just generic. What is what does management look like? Um, what we're doing at the Global Business School for Health is completely different. We have reimagined how to do this. 
uh, we put health and management into every module that we do, even within the digital health entrepreneurship. Uh, so going into this, um, you know, you you aren't necessarily going to walk out of this program knowing how to uh, develop your app, but you'll know how to understand how to to build a company around it. Uh, and, and really, you know, our focus is looking at the global challenges, the large challenges that face uh, both businesses and healthcare around the world. And uh, anyone who has known UCL, uh, you know, University College London, you know, our motto has always been disruptive thinking since 1826, the year that UCL was founded. Uh, we at the Global Business School for Health are no different. We question the status quo of healthcare, of the digital health space and try to figure out what can we do to inspire good and to improve uh, these spaces within health and healthcare. So a little bit about our program uh, and all of this information is available on our website, which obviously you've seen before you came here. Uh, the tuition for UK students next year is uh, just shy of uh, 18,000 uh, pounds. And for those not in the UK, not with residency here, um, it's uh, just shy of 32,000 pounds. Now there are scholarships available for this as I understand this is a lot of money. Uh, and I will talk about that in a few slides. Um, the start date for this will be the last week of uh, September, 2023. So uh, just, just under a year from now. Uh, the program is designed for one year. Uh, like I said, we start the end of September uh, and usually the last assessment for term three will be turned in the first week of September. So it, it truly is 12 months of time. Uh, we also have designed the curriculum so that you can take it as part-time, uh, you know, splitting it over two years. Uh, and, and again, so uh, a part-time student would then split that, that, um, uh, that student fee cost in half, paying each uh, half one year. So what is the Digital Health and Entrepreneurship Program? It's an, in it's an intensive integrated uh, health and business course. Uh, we kick off the year with modules that are focusing in on what is digital health uh, and what does the different spaces of digital health look like? What does a company in those spaces look like? Uh, and then we pair that then with a uh, leadership course on you know, designing the clinical trials associated with it, as well as a module on uh, what does a startup look like? You know, how do you find your idea? How do you follow the money? Uh, how do you develop a business case? Uh, and so this is really a, a primer for everything that you need to have uh, that we build on for the rest of the term. Uh, it's incredibly fast paced. Uh, we've brought in some of the best lecturers around the world. Uh, you know, I'm program lead, but I also have had several startups of my own uh, looking for our first exit here uh, before you start. Uh, so I've lived it. I understand what the, the space looks like. Uh, some of our, our module leads, uh, the module lead for the startup module, uh, just recently departed the Ministry of Trade, where he headed up the UK's digital health entrepreneurship space. Um, you know, we, we have several doctors that have you know, several startups of their own, uh, and we're bringing our entire networks to truly make this a, a, a very fast paced uh, learning session. Uh, you know, not only do you have your, your classroom sessions, but we have several lecture series. We have speakers coming in that I'll talk about in the oncoming slides. Uh, there's constantly stuff going on for you to be involved in. And that's before you even get involved with any of the other opportunities that UCL and London have to offer you. Coming through this class, you're developing the, the skills and strategies for identifying uh, what is a digital health solution? Uh, where is the gap in the market and how can you be primed and, how, and, and create your company to actually take advantage of the gap that you see uh, in whatever market that you come from? So, you know, we, yes, we may be uh, living and working in the UK for the year, uh, but we have speakers and, and people working from all over the world and, and bringing that expertise to show you know, how the markets around the world vary uh, and, and bringing that to your, your fingertips. Uh, as I said, we're exploring the potentials for innovation, looking at you know, frameworks that are used around the world for evaluating what is the uh, level of the innovation, what is the level of the technology that you're trying to do, uh, and, and what does it look like to actually take these technologies from idea into the clinic? What are the steps that you're needed and what, what does each, each step look like? And really, you know, the goal of everything is to use these to improve the access to health outcomes around the world. Again, you know, yes, we may be based in the UK, but we truly do have a global perspective. We are the Global Business School for Health. Uh, and you have, you know, several opportunities within the course uh, to work on whether it be your idea, something that you're bringing in, uh, and, and using it to develop within the frameworks of the modules or trying to develop something new and challenging yourself to go think outside the box uh, and, and really come up with you know, the next innovation that will change global healthcare. 
so, you know, those of you wanting to come in. Uh, so we are, the, the minimum requirement is a uh, UK qualification of 2-1 or the equivalent for around the world. Uh, if you have questions about whether or not um, your, uh, your, your qualifications are equivalent, uh, there's emails at the end, or you can email uh, our admissions office. Uh, they'll be able to better coach you uh, on whether or not your admissions are. Uh, if you're sitting here today and say, oh, I didn't have a 2-1 or I don't have a 2-1, uh, we're well aware that there's many different extenuating circumstances, uh, whether it be something personal uh, that, that, that caused your grades to, to slip maybe during your degree, or maybe you were working on your own company or, or some other professional experiences. Uh, this is why, you know, your personal statement and your reference are really important. Um, you know, just, you know, we, we do give uh, suspension of regulations uh, if we have a compelling case. Uh, so, you know, ju just because you see that 2-1 and you may not uh, need that, uh, don't be discouraged. You know, you know, if you can tell us why you think that is, um, you know, why you didn't achieve that and, and you think it's a compelling case, uh, and if, you know, we, we are definitely willing to consider those. Um, and, and definitely if you have work experience, that's definitely something to bring out. Um, our, our language requirement is uh, the ELETS uh, 6.5 or above as your average. Uh, and this, this, is, uh, this is a requirement. Unfortunately, uh, there are no, um, there, there's no waivers to this one. And, and each of the subject areas within the ELETS test has to be a six. Unfortunately, this is a UCL rule. There's no way that we can waive this. Uh, and and it, is a, it is a requirement uh, that, you know, to teamwork is essential uh, in, in business uh, and teamwork is essential in this. Um, you need, you know, as I said, there's a ton of content going on. You do need to uh, have a, a good understanding of, of English to participate. Uh, you know, the biggest part of your entry is your personal statement. Uh, in this document, you're looking to explain uh, who are you? Why do you think that you would be uh, a great um, addition to this course? Again, you know, why are you going to contribute well to the teams that we use? Uh, and then, you know, what do you want to do? You know, wh why are you taking this course? Uh, you know, this is very important, uh, building into uh, who we accept. Uh, and then again, you need one reference. And this is somebody who uh, is going to have the ability somewhere between your application in June of 2023. Uh, to speak to, um, you know, your qualifications uh, and your suitableness for this program. Uh, so this person really should be somebody who knows you and can speak to uh, why you would be an exceptional person for this course. So, you know, if you're sitting on this call, obviously you you've, uh, have some interest in this course. Uh, so really, it's anyone interested in digital health and entrepreneurship. Uh, as I said, we are not um, teaching you how to program. You are not going to leave this program uh, from just the program content, uh, being a world leading developer of, of digital apps. Uh, but what we are teaching you is how to coach those people. Um, you know, we are providing you uh, frameworks if you want to teach yourself how to program, how to do it, you know, things that, you know, my team and I have used to teach others. Um, and, but more importantly, it's entrepreneurship. What does a company look like? What does it look like to find a gap in a market uh, and then exploit that? So it, it, it's both understanding, you know, health, healthcare, the digital health space, the ecosystem, as well as entrepreneurship. So that, that's a lot being uh, built into this course. Uh, I can tell you from the cohorts that we've had, uh, we have a, a very good collection of both uh, just recent graduates, people, you know, if you're sitting on this call and you say, oh, I'm going to be, uh, you know, finishing in June or July of 23, uh, you know, we, we have a very large uh, people, a very large cohort of people on our course now that are exactly that demographic. We also have a number of people that have been working for a number of years, maybe in the digital health space, maybe in something else completely different and have seen the rapid growth in health, healthcare, digital health, and are looking to pivot their careers into this, you know, rapidly growing space. Uh, so, you know, we welcome everybody, uh, you know, and, and it, it will be a challenge for everybody on this course, uh, you know, regardless of what your backgrounds are. Um, so, you know, regardless of whether you're a new graduate going to be graduating uh, or, or, or have many different or many years of experience, uh, this this course will be a challenge. Uh, and, and again, you, you know, the people coming in that the personal statement, you know, why why are you coming into it? What What is your connection to the digital health technologies, startup companies? You know, or what are you trying to do? Are you trying to bring that entrepreneurial mindset to uh, whoever your employer is in the future?
So the program starts, uh, like I said, the last week of September, 2023, and we start with a year, uh, a one week induction. Uh, so this uh, provides you an introduction to our department, to your course. Uh, we have several of events. Uh, this past year, we had the longest, uh, this past year's induction, we had the longest serving health secretary in UK history uh, come and give us uh, the induction to, to start off and, and, and tell you what amazing program you're in. Uh, several world leaders in, in healthcare. Uh, and so you know, next year, we're going to have those equally high power people uh, there to uh, welcome you to the course uh, and tell you, uh, you know, what, what you can do in the future. Uh, and you get, to, you, know, inter you, you get to start off your year interacting with these sorts of people. Uh, we provide a, a self-paced course uh, before you come in to give you a little bit more of a background uh, to sort of understand what, we're, what our goal is for the year to get you going. Once we launch into the program, uh, the program is a combination of in-person uh, events as well as uh, pre-recorded lectures, seminars, tutorials. As I said, your schedule is going to be packed full. Uh, each term, you're going to have uh, four modules uh, for a total of eight over terms one and two. But on top of that, we have a number of career building opportunities, uh, writing workshops, uh, communication workshops, pitching workshops. We have uh, seminar sessions on Pathways to Here where we have uh, recent alumni, recent uh, young people uh, under the age of 35 uh, that are just building their careers in the digital health space, talk about what it was like to find their first job, to get their first company going uh, and share those sorts of insights. Uh, you know, we, and so across all the programs, you know, just because you're in the digital health um, at program, uh, there's also the global healthcare management, there's also the pharmaceutical uh, and, and biotech management. Uh, these seminars are available to everybody um, and, and so uh, there, there's a ton of uh, opportunities going on. Uh, as I said, there's four modules each semester with two projects, uh, each worth 30 credits over uh, term three. Uh, these projects are started early in the year. Uh, one of them is developing a business case. Uh, so you and a team of five total uh, will be working to develop your uh, business idea. Uh, each one of these projects, each one of these business case projects is going to be uh, mentored by someone from industry with relevant experience. Uh, and so you'll have many opportunities throughout the year to work with them, uh, to learn about what they do, but also for them to sound to, to be a sounding board for you to help develop your idea and help to uh, you know really make sure that you are uh, learning the skills that are going to be need to do it. You know these are all people who, who have lived it, who have done it multiple times over, uh, massively successful. Uh, and again, you know, you as a team of five have direct access to those people uh, several times throughout the year to, to help better your idea. Uh, the second uh, project is a individual term paper where you get to now explore some aspect of uh, digital health uh, of your choosing, uh, uh, digging into it more. Uh, this is a book project. Uh, this, this isn't actually collecting uh, novel data, uh, but uh, can help uh, you know, frame up, you know, how would you build a business case in a specific market? Uh, what do you need to do to develop a tool? Uh, but so this is really helping you define a piece of digital health that you're interested in. Throughout the year, there's a number of different assessments. Uh, there, there's open book written assess, uh, examinations, there's coursework essays, uh, there's a lot of verbal presentations. Again, this uh, pitching of projects, uh, pitching of ideas, uh, and then of course the two projects at the end of the year. Uh, so like I've said, is, is regardless of um, you know, your your abilities. Uh, there's going to be something here to challenge. You know, if you're good at writing, you know, there's also the pitching contest. If you're good at pitching, you know, focusing in on the writing, uh, and we really make sure that everybody does uh, uh, well. As said, um, you know, there are scholarships. I understand that, that the cost of education going up. Um, you know, this is just a very uh, beginning level of where to start. Um, so there, there's uh, the Women in Healthcare Leadership Scholarships providing 5K towards tuition. Uh, anyone calling in from East London, uh, there are opportunities available for you. Uh, this is an area that we're actively working on. Uh, you know, we're working with uh, many different entities trying to, to firm this up. Uh, so, you know, if you check back again in, uh, you know, three months or four months, uh, we'll have a lot more opportunities available for you. Um, you know, our, our goal here is to have a very diverse student cohort, uh, and we understand that the expenses are high, uh, and so we are doing everything we can to find scholarships for, again, exceptionally qualified candidates. 
so on top of the, 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 the scholarships, um, anyone coming or, or being based uh, students coming, uh, there's a number of other uh, funding opportunities. There's the uh, Chevening or Commonwealth Fellowships if you're from the, the UK or from uh, the British Commonwealth. Uh, there's Fulbright scholarships open to, to international scholars. Uh, as well as the GRAVE program. And again, uh, if you take a look at um, UCL and you look up scholarships, uh, there's a number of opportunities there for you to take a look at uh, to help funding. Uh, and then obviously many countries offer their own funding opportunities for those wanting to study abroad. Uh, so it, I would highly recommend looking into all the opportunities that you have available. Uh, this really is an investment in yourself. Uh, as, I've, as, I'm say, as I said, and as I'm going to continue, there's so many opportunities here to network with people from around the world uh, to better your career. So yes, it's a lot of money, uh, but you know, we all the courses we've developed, we've developed with the support uh, and with the guidance of you know global leading uh, employers. Uh, that uh, you know, so we're making sure that our alumni are going to be highly employable regardless of where you go in the world. Uh, so this truly is an investment in your future. Uh, you know, so talking, you know, leading into that, your career support, um, you know, during week one, we introduced you to all the opportunities that UCL has available to you, all, all the clubs and the programs focused in on health, focused in on entrepreneurship, uh, leadership there, uh, you know, puts you into networks uh, around the world, uh, people just like you, uh, hiring managers from around the world. Uh, we work very closely with the UCL uh, career services. Uh, we also have a person in-house that we've just hired that is going to be responsible for running jobs fairs, running job boards for all you. Uh, I can tell you personally as a program lead, uh, I have recruiters calling me every day saying, hey, I want access to your alumni because you know, we've looked at your program. We've heard all the great things that uh, people are saying about your program. Uh, we want access to your alumni. Uh, so there, there's a lot of opportunities available. You know, People coming to us looking for people just like you, our future alumni. Um, you know, so that there, there, there's a lot of opportunities, you know, that we have our career services helping you with interview skills, working with, uh, you know, working on your CV, helping you define based on what your interests are, uh, what sort of jobs might be looking for you. On top of that, uh, you, as I said, you have the industry mentors that are going to work with you uh, on um, your project. We have several events throughout the year, both induction week, as well as throughout the year. Uh, where you're going to see the other industry mentors, not just the one that you're working with on your project. Uh, we also have um, an executive in residence program. Uh, so every week, one or two of these um, executives for, again, global healthcare companies will be available. Uh, and you're going to be able to sign up to meet a few of them throughout the year uh, and discuss, you know, how do they get where they are? What sort of career advice do they have uh, for someone like you? Uh, on top of that, um, you know, UCL as a university and University of College or University of London, even more broadly, has amazing career services. Uh, you know, innovation and enterprise is just one of those within the UCL environment. Uh, they have a number of events throughout the year uh, for anyone within the UCL umbrella that is interested in enterprise, uh, where you can come and mix with uh, people like yourself from industry. Uh, and then obviously UCL is a, a world leading brand. You know, we have alumni networks around the world. Um, and you know, as, as being part of the program, you get to tap into all of those sorts of services as well. So, you know, is what sort of careers can you do with this? Um, you know, this is just a small list. Uh, you know, we work very closely with uh, KPMG, Dulight, PWC, um, you know, EY, McKenzie, uh, you know, all of these groups are looking to recruit our alumni. Um, you're going to be talking to hiring managers throughout the year as they're coming in. They're, they're, our ed, they're part of the education team. They're part of the leadership team. Uh, so you'll get you know, access to them. Uh, you know, we're, I, I, we have contacts with just about every major um, you know, pharmaceutical biotech company. Again, they're coming in, they're giving lectures. Uh, they're going to be at the industry events for you to, to interact with. Um, several of us sit on World Health Organization or World Economic Forum uh, uh, boards, you know, so we're interacting with all those people, they're coming in, they're participating in our teaching, they're participating uh, in the industry events. So they're, they're, there's no, uh, you know, they're, they're all looking for our alumni. Uh, and then obviously, if you wanna start up, you know, UCL has um, a number of great opportunities, base KX, uh, as well as uh, links to the other, you know, global uh, healthcare uh, incubators, 
to help get you, your idea off the ground. So, you know, as I've said, you know, there's there a lot of great activities, you know, we're, we're going to pack your schedule full of activities, uh, you know, focusing on, on bettering you as a professional within the Global Business School of Health. But you are also, uh, if you are part of this program, you are also part of the larger UCL community. Uh, the Students Union has all sorts of societies. Uh, you know, I've been teaching entrepreneurship at UCL for a number of years. Many of my students have gone on uh, to be president or, or executive committee of the entrepreneurship uh, committee. Uh, you know, parts, you know, I, I've had people part of the medical committee. Uh, and, and so these are all, you know, outside of our, our department, uh, you know, pan UCL looking to, uh, you know, promote activities to better you as a professional, uh, develop the soft skills that you're going to need to be uh, successful. Uh, within the Global Business School of Health, we also have our own uh, programs that are being set up that are, are run by you, the students of the Global Business School of Health. Uh, again, you know, working with our faculty, working with our, our links, again, just providing more and more opportunities for you on top of everything that's already baked into the, the schedule. Uh, you will not be bored the year that you spend with us. Uh, and, and if all of this uh, professional development isn't enough, there's also 250 societies and clubs at UCL uh, aimed at uh, other ventures, you know, whether it's sports, uh, you know, the 70 sports club, you know, pick a sport, uh, there's a club at UCL focused in on it. Uh, where you can meet people like yourself interested in that sport from all sorts of different backgrounds uh, to participate and, and to grow what you're interested in. Uh, you know, there, there's yoga, there's Amnesty International uh, chapters, uh, if, if that's what you're looking at. And then no lack of uh, volunteering opportunities through UCL to, again, get more experience, you know, talk to the healthcare community to see what is the idea that, um, you know, what, what is the, the, the idea looking or what is the, the problem looking for a solution that you could develop? You know, what is your next company going to be? Uh, we know that uh, the world is a, a complicated place, uh, you know, with, with everything going on, it's, it's very challenging. There's lots of deadlines, lots of things that you have to do. Uh, UCL does have a leading uh, student support and well-being team. Uh, you're introduced to them uh, during induction. Uh, they do activities throughout the year. Uh, just remember that they are there. And uh, if you need support, uh, they are there for you 24-7 uh, every day of the year uh, and able to support what you're doing. Um, and so uh, pivoting a little bit more. So the Global Business School of Health is uh, being launched in uh, the east of London. So it, it, you know, so those of you who might know London, uh, know the Bloomsbury campus in central London. The Global Business School of Health has moved east. So it's a brand new campus being built. Um, and so you know, if you look at the building here, this, uh, this uh, tower here, uh, what, what Helter Skelter was built for the uh, London Olympics. Uh, the entire campus here is built on what was the 2012 uh, Olympic site. Uh, so, you know, just off the, the picture here uh, is the rest of the Olympic uh, Park, uh, the Olympic Stadium, the Auditorium, the, the, the swimming pool, um, all the racquetball courts, the, the indoor cycling arena. Um, you know, all of these are now open to the public uh, in order to, you know, anyone who wants to do those sorts of sports on your own, uh, you can become a member there and, and, and go swim. Uh, you know, you have the River Lay here, uh, which uh, has a number of spots where you can sit along it uh, and just watch what's going on. Uh, in the early part and late part of the year, uh, there's all sorts of water activities, there's boats, other things that you can do to actually get on the water and, and, and enjoy yourself. Uh, the building here uh, is opening in March. This is going to be our home, the, the home of the Global Business School of Health. Uh, this is where your teaching is going to be. Uh, it's going to be brand new facilities. You're going to be the first class in this brand new building. To your experience. Uh, you know, so th this is the Olympic auditorium here, the, the Olympic swimming pool. Again, it's, it's open most of the day for public swim, anyone who wants to go in there. Uh, so if you were to continue just beyond the, um, uh, the swimming pool here, we have uh, Westfield Shopping Center. It's the largest shopping center of Europe. Um, it, it has a ton of restaurants in it, fast food, sit down dining, formal dining, uh, and just about any sort of European shop that you could possibly want. Um, you know, if you go just beyond um, the Olympic Park heading this way, you hit a uh, part of London that is called Hackney Wick. Again, it's a lot, it's a, a very up and coming area, a ton of great restaurants, great uh, social venues, uh, and then also Victoria Park, which is another beautiful, large, green London park. Uh, and, and so everything is just a few minutes away. 
Um, so Sadler as well is a very well-known uh, playhouse. Uh, the Victoria and Albert is a very uh, well-known culture museum. Uh, both of them have brand new facilities being built uh, just beyond the auditorium here, right on our campus. Uh, BBC has their uh, new music uh, recording venue that's uh, going up uh, right, again, right on our campus. Uh, so all of these great cultural pieces are again, just minutes away. And if that still isn't enough, um, we now have two, two tracks. You have a high-speed line that, will, that runs every 10 minutes and puts you eight minutes, uh, puts you right into King's Cross, the center heart of London, heart of main UCL. Uh, and then we just, uh, London just uh, this past year opened up the new brand new Elizabeth line, a new high speed, uh, large clean line running from Stratford station, runs right along the south of campus, right into Oxford Street, uh, you know, the, and into the West End, again, putting you right in the middle of London. So. You know, we now have two lines that, you know, if, if everything that we have in East London isn't good enough for you, uh, within minutes, you can now be in central London or anywhere else you want to be. Uh, you know, Stratford really is very well served with public transit. Uh, there's a number of other lines other than those two that take you anywhere else that you want to get in London or out of London, if, if that's what your, your choices are. So, it, you know, just because we're not in central London, this is actually a benefit. There's a ton of great things to do in East London, uh, and you're going to be right in the middle of it. Yeah, as I said, London is a great place. Uh, 2021, it was ranked as the best school in, or best city in the world to be a student. Uh, you know, there, there, there's no lack of things to do. There's no lack of free things to do. Uh, I, I understand London is an expensive place. Uh, our museums, our galleries, these are all free. Uh, you know, London has its, its pubs and its clubs if that's what you're interested in. But also London is a very green city. Uh, you know, from Stratford, you have the entire Olympic Park, you have Victoria Park, uh, Greenwich Park is, uh, you know, 20 minutes away, 15 minutes away, uh, on one, one shot on, on a, a public transit line. You know, you have the Royal Observatory, uh, you have uh, the Royal Naval College, uh, and another great, you know, giant green park. And, and you know, the rest of London, you know, has, has tons of parks. Uh, and no, and uh, the O2, the largest uh, concert venue in London, again, is just a couple minutes away on, on the Jubilee line. Uh, so there's no lack, lack of things to do. Uh, in, in London. Uh, so um, if you're uh, interested, you know, you're all here today for um, the, the Digital Health Entrepreneurship Program, uh, but we're going to be running another one of these next week, focusing in on scholarships. If you have any interest in that, uh, please go to our website and you can register for that. Uh, if you're interested in one of our other programs, the, the MBA uh, Health or the, the Global Healthcare Management uh, both of those have upcoming uh, information days. If that might be something you're interested in, again, go on to the website and you can register the, uh, for any of those. And again, uh, you can always come back to more of these, you know, see what people's questions are and, and go from there. So with that, I'd like to uh, thank you for your um, time. Uh, I see that there is uh, one hand up and I'm happy to stay until the hour to uh, answer uh, any of your questions. Uh, so Abdul, um, I will let you talk. So if you would like to, Abdul Martin, if you'd like to ask your question. Okay. So um, we'll we'll I'm waiting for Abdul. Uh, so so uh, so the, the main difference about uh, the MBA Health and this program is uh, MBA Health is looking to develop leadership and management skills. Uh, the point of this, and if you have an interest in those and digital health, there are plenty of opportunities to improve your digital health training within leadership and management. Uh, the point of this program is really to focus you in on what would it take to be a business development manager? What would it take to start your own company within the digital health space? Uh, so um, the MBA is aimed much more for uh, mature people. You do need to have at least, uh, several years of industry experience to qualify for that course. Um, but just because you have years of experience doesn't mean that you have to go there and that you wouldn't learn anything here. 
so the, the, that's the biggest difference is that uh, this course is suited for anyone from a recent graduate up into sort of mid-career. Uh, the, uh, the MBA course is aimed at people at the middle of their career looking to go into executive or C-suite um, you know, positions in the near future. Okay, so the, the, the question about the, the, the CV. So uh, the, uh, the way that the UCL admissions process works is that uh, your CV uh, components will be put into the admission system uh, block by block. Uh, so there isn't a, a paper CV requirement, uh, but you do need to put all of that information into the application form. Again, with a, a, a personal statement and uh, contacts for a reference. Uh, okay, so the next question is, what is the portion of uh, what is the portion of uh, medical or pharmaceutical degrees or, or content in a period? Does being a health graduate have a disadvantage during the program? Um, I can tell you that our cohort this year is about um, uh, about a quarter. Um, well, so it's, it's about two thirds um health and uh engineering backgrounds um the the health spoke are are the 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 health pharmaceutical healthcare uh allied health professionals probably make up about a, a third of that uh there's a lot of biomedical sciences people uh, as well as engineers uh but then um, a third of the class this year have no health background at all uh so one of the th you know so we are providing the high level frameworks with the inroads in for you to find your information. Um, so, uh, you know, I can tell you that uh, everyone's going to be challenged. There is going to be business and economics in every uh, module. There is going to be some health in every module, uh, but as uh, you know, we as the lecturers are making sure that the, the background content is available so that the people that have the, the, the business background can learn the, the bits of the, the, the diseases that they need to understand the people with the medical background can understand the, the business pieces that they need to be con contributing. Uh, so um, everybody's at a disadvantage. Nobody's at a specific disadvantage. Uh, so I, I do encourage you to apply because I can guarantee you, uh, you know, our cohort this year is 70 people. Uh, our backgrounds are incredibly varied uh, and, and somebody will have a background similar to you. Okay, uh, so I will allow Henry, if you would like to ask your question. Oh, hello. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, can I can you? hear you. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the time. I have a question. Uh, as we know, the uh, world now are facing a hard time, especially in the economy. And what I have read, about UK also facing the same thing, right? And inflation and the high of the food price. And how can you tell us how's the condition now? And can you predict uh, how's the condition for the next year? As you know, London is pretty expensive to live, especially for students, right? So could you uh, explain how's the condition and uh, what could we do? Is it still a good place to study there in London, especially? Thank you. I think that's all my question. Okay. Thank you. Um, so London is expensive. Um, uh, I've been here for a uh, little over nine years. Uh, as I said, um, I think London is still a great place to study. Um, you know, this is an investment in your future and bettering where, where you want to be. Um, you know, UCL has long had management courses. Um, and they, they sit there and they teach you great content. Um, you know, our goal is to put you in jobs. You know, our, our goal as a department is that uh, come March of your year, uh, of the year that you're here, you already have your job lined up for September. Um, you know, we, this is why we're putting all of these programmings in place, uh, giving all the opportunities for you to interact with people that are looking to hire people just like you. Um, and, and so this truly is an investment into your future. Um, and we're doing everything we can to make sure that every opportunity is available to you 
to make sure that you walk away from this program with a job that you want to do paying paying you um, the money that you may have lost in the year that you were being here. Um, you know, there, there's no way around London, London being expensive, but um, there's a lot that you can do for cheap, uh, for entertainment purposes. And again, I think that um, as far as value goes, uh, we have really put in a ton of effort, different from every other university in the UK, uh, to make sure that, um, you know, we are providing the opportunities for you to be successful after you're done. Like I said, you know, all the semin all the extra seminars that we're running for you, all the ac other activities that we're doing, um, you know, we understand that it's expensive. We're trying to provide the greatest value that we can for you. Um, I might be biased because I'm part of it, but I think that if you look at what we're doing, it is far more and it's all free compared to what other programs would be. They're charging a similar amount of money. Um, so I, I, unfortunately, uh, you know, it, it's really up to you and your your background uh, and, and what your economic circumstances are. Um, you know, as I said at the, the scholarship slide, um, you know, we, we, we as the senior management team of the school are doing a ton of work to get as many scholarships available to the people that need it um, for whatever, you know, why ever they justify it. You know, we're not going to be able to provide a scholarship for everybody, but we are trying to provide a scholarship to make sure that um, the, can the candidates that are, are qualified to get in are able to come. So I, I hope that, you know, it, it's probably not a, a yes, no answer, but I, I, I can tell you that we're providing a great value for money and we're doing everything we can to find more scholarships uh, to try making it more affordable uh, for those who may not be able to afford it. Thank you. Very good. Uh, so the other question is, when is the application of this degree going to open? Uh, so it should open uh, near the end of the year. Uh, and then it will run uh, likely until June. Are there any other questions? I'll give it uh, one more minute here. If there's any other questions, I'm happy to uh, answer them. Otherwise, um, you know, all, all of you obviously saw the Global Business School for Health website. That's how you guys got here. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly updating it. We're constantly putting more information up there um, that hopefully will guide you. Um, if you don't have any questions, um, you know, you can always uh, come back to one of our other information days. Uh, you know, as I, you know, on the scholarship one, um, you know, we, we have the scholarship work uh, session next week, uh, talking about, you know, funding up funding opportunities. Uh, so the, the question that came through, what is the proportion between UK and international students in the class? Uh, so this year, it's about uh, two thirds international, uh, one third UK students. Uh, we're looking, and that's probably about the pr uh, proportion of um, people coming through. Uh, as I said, we have 70 um, students on this year's cohort. Uh, with that, we have 17 countries uh, represented um, as far as you know, where the students hailed from uh, on this year's cohort. Uh, and our goal is to be even more diverse next year. And so we're, we're taking active steps to make that more diverse, but it probably will be one third UK, two thirds international. Uh, so the question is, um, uh, is to, uh, access to today's recording, sorry. Uh, so you, all of this information will be put onto the events link, or sorry, the events section uh, within the uh, Global Business School for Health uh, webpage. So uh, give, uh, give our comms team here uh, a day or two uh, to get the recording up, but it will be available on our website shortly. Okay, any other questions?
Okay, well, uh, thank you everybody for um, your, your time today. I hope that you uh, are more interested in this program. If you have any other questions going forward, you know, obviously contact our, our education team. We have an, an exceptional team here uh, and they aim to get back to you within the day uh, and can provide more information. As I said, we're constantly updating our, our website uh, with more funding opportunities and, and the most uh, up-to-date information about this program. So last call, any other questions? Okay then, well, thank you so much for your time today and I hope to see you all next fall.